Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat Nagpal. You're watching iGyan Network. Last week was WWDC and I had a chance to experience a lot of new things at WWDC and there was a little bit of a irritating thing that happened. Uh, we're going to be talking about iOS 13. We're going to be talking about iPad OS 13. I don't know why it's called 13. We are also going to be talking about Mac OS and also the Mac Pro. In this video, however, we are going to be focusing on iOS 13, some of the coolest new features. We've installed the iOS 13 beta on our iPhone and I wanted to show you some of the coolest new features and some of the new things that are now available with iOS 13. The public beta will be available in July, but before you go on and install the public beta, you want to know what's new. So let's find out in this video. Now dark mode has been available on some Android devices for a while, but with iOS 13, the way dark mode has been incorporated is that it is available throughout the user interface. And then later on apps and developers will be able to incorporate dark mode within their applications so that it switches with iOS uh, when you switch iOS to dark mode. There's also an auto dark mode feature uh, where you can set it from sunrise to sunset or your own custom times. But there's also some other integrations that they've done with dark mode. So there are some dark mode wallpapers also available, uh, which have this little icon uh, next to the wallpaper, which means that it is available in a dark mode and a light mode. So the wallpaper subtly changes the light paths to dark and uh, vice versa whenever you switch from dark mode to light mode. And in the control center, there's also a quick toggle to jump into light mode if you want to do that or jump into dark mode simply by holding down on uh, the brightness toggle and then tapping on the light or the dark mode. Now dark mode, if you have an OLED iPhone, including uh, the iPhone XS and XS Max, uh, you will save considerable amounts of battery because you'll get local dimming on OLED devices, which will save battery life in the longer run. And you'll see considerable savings over a period of time. Uh, the way it's been implemented is that it is available throughout all system apps, system sliders, control center, settings apps, uh, photos, basically every native iOS app already has it on iOS 13. And like I mentioned, developers will be able to enable this. So for example, YouTube will be able to enable an auto dark mode switch and also a manual toggle within the settings panel so that if you want to switch from dark to light, automatically or manually, you'll be able to do that. So the next big thing is definitely going to be sign in with Apple. Now this is Apple's big step towards privacy and also saving your data from being leaked out or being sold by developers to third parties. What this does is wherever you have a social login, so Twitter, Google or Facebook, Apple will also add a sign in with Apple option, which will allow you to sign in securely without sharing your information with an Apple sign in. This will also not give your email address. This will also not give your social information to the developer. In fact, Apple will create a private email address that will be relayed through Apple servers to send you whatever information the developer needs to send you. This will save your data from being shared or being sold by developers and hence maintain your privacy online. And this has been considered one of the most important steps towards privacy on iOS devices and almost all developers are on board. And in fact, a lot of people using Android devices have also said that they might switch to the iPhone simply for sign in with Apple. Now, there are also other improvements, basic speed improvements. Face ID is much faster. So if you're unlocking your phone with Face ID or if you're authorizing a payment or buying an application, any such thing will be much faster now because they've been able to use software to improve speeds on hardware and appreciated add-on for people. So with iOS 13, you'll see improvements in multitasking, improvements in Face ID, improvements from jumping from application to application, and also they've reduced the download packet size. So if you're downloading apps from the App Store, they'll be about 50% smaller than what they were previously thanks to the new file system. So it'll definitely improve on speeding up your phone throughout, whether it's downloading, whether it's uh, everyday usage, or whether it's simply unlocking your phone. Another big update for a lot of people is gonna be the photo editing and the video editing. Uh, the photo editing within the Photos app has been completely overhauled and it gives you finer control over lots of things that you can do on photos. It'll allow you to basically fine tune smaller, finer details, including brightness, contrast, every little detail can be manually triggered so you don't need a professional photo editing app you can basically do it in the photos app 
So what's great about this is that if you're a videographer or a content creator and you shoot a lot of video on your iPhone, you'll now be able to natively edit those videos. You'll be able to change the aspect ratio and do simple things that were not available before, like rotate from landscape to portrait. So if you accidentally shot your video in portrait, but want it in landscape, you'll be able to do that from the Photos app natively without requiring any third party application or software. You can also apply filters, do finer correction within video, including color grading, which is uh, really a professional feature for which usually you'd need a professional software on an iMac or on a Windows PC. Now you can do it directly from your iPhone, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's something that we intend on using a lot because it will make our life a lot more easier. Apple is also really focusing on Apple Maps, even though in the first few years, Apple Maps was really being ignored and being touted as a failure. Apple has really picked up its game and now Apple Maps is available in India. And with uh, the new Apple Maps, you can also get a local version or Apple version of Street View, which they call Look Around. And it basically shows these binoculars wherever you have this feature available. You can tap on the binoculars. The implementation is really good. It's super smooth. You can move around the streets. It's quite fun to even move the little binocular around on the map and you can drop it on any location that you want to look around. So this is a really cool feature. Will be implemented in other countries and other states uh, within the US later on. And hopefully they'll also bring it to India, which will then make it very interesting because even Google Maps doesn't offer street view all over India. Some other interesting things include more customization on Memoji. You can now add accessories, earrings, you can even color your hair. So a lot of fun things have been added to Memoji. A lot of people use Memoji quite a lot. So with iOS 13, you'll get more customizations and more individual ability to sort of make your Memoji stand out from other Memojis that people may have. Now, this is a feature that Android has had for many years, almost uh, six to seven years now. It's a native swipe keyboard on iOS. People have had this and in fact, even iOS has had a swipe keyboard option. You could install a third party keyboard up until last year, but that was always slow and laggy. Now Apple has already implemented a swipe keyboard on iOS 13 and it will be available finally for iPhone users. So if you like using swipe keyboard or gesture based typing, you'll be able to do that on iOS finally. Now, simple other uh, upgrades or improvements include the fact that you will be able to select Wi-Fi from the control center. Now, this was a feature, again, available on Android for a while. In fact, Android has removed this and you can now see it on iOS. You'll be able to simply tap on the Wi-Fi icon and then switch between uh, whatever Wi-Fi network you want directly from the control center. You also have the ability to automatically silence uh, spam callers. So if you want uh, the iOS to automatically silence calls from an unknown number, you can do that. So if you only want to receive calls from your contacts, uh, that's an option and automatically unknown numbers or spam numbers will be silenced. You might miss out some important calls from people you don't have contacts of. So be careful when you use this feature when iOS 13 is later available. Now, another cool feature is the ability to share audio. Now, this works in two ways. If both users have an iPhone, they can simply put their iPhones together and share music from one iPhone to the other. The other way is that now you can pair multiple headphones. So you can, if you have AirPods, you can pair two pair of AirPods and listen to the same music or watch the same movie or video on a single iOS or an iPadOS device. And we tested it out. It works great, audio quality and uh, sync between the headphones is almost perfect. So already on the beta version, it works great. So when the final build comes out, it should be seamless across devices. Now, I also got to sit with a couple of developers at WWDC and all of them were all praised about developing on iOS. They say that the simplicity of developing with the Swift code or even if game developers are developing on Unity, it's so much simpler for them to develop on iOS than it is to develop on Android. In fact, some of them develop for iOS first and then port their apps to Android because it's simpler that way. I got to sit with a developer at WWDC who's developed a classical music app which uses AI and machine learning to automatically play instruments in the background when a singer sings. He's got really nice sounding instruments and they're not loops, they're actual instruments that change as the tempo changes and they change as the person's song changes throughout his singing. Check this out. 
and see what he has to say about developing on iOS. The only way that this technology can be brought to anybody right now is through iOS. That is the only platform that this app can actually work on. And the reason is that Android in its sound stack has very high latency. This is a problem a lot of people are talking about, but it is not an easy fix. And what happens is, for example, if you play the Swaramandal, right, you have 40 strings, you're going to play them very rapidly. So each string is going to start playing about you know, 8, 10, 15 milliseconds apart, milliseconds apart. There are 30 strings playing in parallel. On Android, there is a 20 to 200 millisecond latency, which is unpredictable at any point in time, so randomly. Swaramandal doesn't sound like a Swaramandal at all. It just stutters like it, it sounds very bad. Okay, I'll, I'll do a popular composition which I'm sure you must have heard. Alabela Sajanayori in Raga Hirbharav. So I'll start the Swaramandal now. So while the beta is available today and the public beta comes out uh, later this month or early July, I would recommend staying off any betas if you are using an iPhone or an iOS device as your main device. Wait till the final release comes out in September, possibly with the iPhone 11, then you'll be able to upgrade to a stable iOS 13 and be able to enjoy most of these features without any problems. If you want more details on iOS 13, you can check out iGAN.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. This has been Bharat Nagpal. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.